to the Foundation, a weekly Bible study for the youth of First Baptist Church of Kimberly City. Now let's join Associate Pastor Sean Gaston as he teaches from God's Word. Hey students, good to see you this evening. Church, good to see you. I uh, just want to tell you we're going to be continuing on in Ephesians. This will be kind of an abbreviated version to, compared to what I've been doing. And I'm sorry, we're going to be cutting this down to about 10 minutes on Wednesday nights now. Pastor's message will continue on on uh, Wednesday evenings at 7. Ours will be again at 5. So just continue watching that. Devotions again throughout the week at 9 a.m. But we're going to continue on talking about the armor of God, Christian warfare. And again, Going through the book of Ephesians, Paul addresses so many different things from our walk in our faith. And today, I, I want us to really just think about, are you, are you dressed for the occasion? Are you dressed for the occasion? Just uh, the other day, this past weekend, uh, my daughter was going out on a date, and she uh, was told that this guy was going to take her to a really nice restaurant. So she went out, and, and she got a beautiful dress uh, to wear, and, and this gentleman came in a really nice suit and uh they went to Top of the Rock, just a really nice location. And so they were dressed for the occasion. They are dressed to, to go to this, this very nice restaurant and enjoy just a, a nice evening together. But, you know, so often in our Christian walk, when we think about our, our battles that, that we're getting ready to endure, and it's important that we, that we realize that we are in a spiritual battle uh, just about every day of our life, right? And, and, you know, are we fully dressed and armed for the occasion? So the occasion that Paul is talking about here, uh, Paul tells us it's important that we be strengthened by the Lord. And this is why. Because it is a battle that, that, we, uh, that we can become battle-weary in. And so do you guys know what it means to be battle-weary? Uh, you know, battle-weary means it's a time when you um, are just incredibly just wore out, drained. You know, I can't do this anymore. I can't go on. Um, you know, so a lot of times we become battle-weary when it's when we're in a state where we are in a prolonged conflict or battle. That could be in relationships, friendships, uh, um, just an argument with your parents, you know, any different thing. Maybe it's a sickness or you know, the situations that were going on now where you're having to social distance and life has just kind of been turned upside down. You know, different things we battle with, with um, spiritually. And at times, you know, in life, when we just are trying to do things on our own in our own accord, we can become incredibly just wore out and tired out and just feel like just giving up. So Paul goes on to say it's important that we put on the full armor of God, not just some of it, but all of it. And why do we need to do this? The reason why we need to do it is so that we can stand firm, right? And we can stand against um, who you might ask. The reason we're trying to stand firm is because we're standing firm against what verse 11 tells us uh, is the devil, right? It says that we are to... to in verse 11, when we just kind of look at this real quick, it says that, that we stand against the schemes of the devil. And the schemes or, or uh, tricks of the devil um, are things that he's going to try and do to try and trip you up in, in your walk with God, right? To try and get you off course, to try and get, uh, get you to give up and give in. So in our war, our struggles are not against, as it said there, flesh and blood. So it's important that in our battle uh, that we have a good perspective, that we realize what we're battling against. That's not against our flesh and blood. It's not against necessarily the things that, that we can see, but it's against the rulers, the authorities, against the cosmic powers of darkness. So it's important that we change our perspective. As, as Again, I talked about this before as somebody who is saved, somebody who has received Christ, and the Bible says you become a new creation in Him, our perspective changes because we've changed. Even though we are in the world, we are not supposed to be of the world. So our, our perspective change on how we look at things. And that should also change on how we attack, right? Our struggles, um, our temptations, all these different things. So, you know, how do we, when we change our perspective... That's one thing, but it's also 
important for us to realize that God has purposed us, right? He's a, a purposed us with this armor. So what is the purpose of this armor in this battle? So this armor that God gives each and every one of us, again, this is something that God gives. It's not something that we provide for ourselves, even though we try to uh, handle battles on our own. It's important that we realize that God has given us this armor. And it's given to us to help us in our advancing, not in our retreat. See, God, everything that we, we put on that God has given us, right, is on the front aspect of, of who we are. So it's important that when we look at that, it's for the advancement of bringing that gospel forward, right? Our advancement of growing in our faith. And the reason for this is, is so that the Bible says, so that you can resist the temptations um, and those temptations are deception, again, to give up, to give in. Uh, and it's important that these you realize that the, the purpose behind this armor that we're going to be talking about is to help you to stand. And what's this stance? To stand strong uh, in Christ. All right, and so we looked at the perspective, a spiritual perspective, not a worldly perspective, the purpose behind the honor, armor, and now what it's uh, reasoning is, and the reason is, is to protect us. So first he tells us that we are to put on the belt of truth, and I talked about this last week a little bit, that this belt is used to gird um, our garment around our waist, right, um, when it comes to the visual aspect of what Paul is getting about here. So it was to hold their tunic uh, tight, right, for the advancement in, in battle, to keep them from getting hung up on things or to trip up on their garment. And so, uh, you know, if that was the case, when we look at that spiritually, the, the spiritual spiritual aspect of, of what the belt, the belt of truth is, is to keep us, it's to tighten up who we are in our, our relationship with God and who we are in in the aspect of, of what we were created to be in God, right? So it tightens up our understanding of what that is. And in that, it helps us in our advancement of going forward and keeps us from getting snagged or tripped up on the obstacles of Satan. Because Satan's going to try and trip you up. He's going to try and cause you to, to fall into his schemes of, of, of who he wants you to be, and uh, which is a polar opposite of what God uh, staged that you are. So the next thing he tells us that we are to put on is, and what we're going to focus on tonight is this breastplate of righteousness. So the breastplate is, is used to protect uh, the heart, right, and the other vital organs from the blows of the enemy. So this breastplate of righteousness is, again, something given to us by God. So it's important that we keep, uh, that we are keeping on what is right, right in God's eyes and not our own. And so that's what's so important about this is to realize that righteousness, so often when we think about righteousness, we think about, well, righteousness is whatever I think is right. But true righteousness, when I looked at the meaning of righteousness, is an attribute that belongs to God. So what it is, it's the, the, the lawgiver, and it, you know, which is God, and it's the things that he has manifested in this law. So no man could be justified by his own works. And even though we try to justify things and we try to say that this is right, when we do that, we ourselves are putting ourselves in the place of God, just as Satan tried to do. So it's important that we realize that we can um, be justified by his works and his works alone, not from our own. So it's important that we are uh, in attune to the, the ordinances of God. Therefore, righteousness is a wonderful gift from God to humanity through His love. His love that is given to us and imputed to us by the love of Christ, the Son of God. So it's important to realize that righteousness only comes through the giving of the, of the Holy Spirit, through the love of God. So you gamers out there, you guys that, that play these games all the time, right? That are um, all the time paying for and working for these false armors that you put on these... Uh, fictitious uh, uh, soldiers in, in armor, you know, whatever game you might be playing. I know a lot of you guys are into um, all different kinds of, of, of battle games out there, um, you know, and we do this for a victory that we can try to obtain in these virtual worlds. 
But I want you to know, listen, this is reality. God has, you know, built up this real armor for you. He has paid the price for it. And he has placed it upon you. And he's prepared you with this armor for everything that you're going to come across. And it's important that we realize that God wants you to keep advancing forward in your, in your life and in your relationship, in this battle, whatever battle you're in. And he wants you to be one that is, is fighting as one who is victorious and not defeated. So when we put on that breastplate of righteousness, remember, we're putting on the things that are right in, in God, not in our own understanding. And it's protecting our heart, who we are, who we truly know is right. And uh, we're carrying that around. We're protecting it, right? Because that affects everything about who we are as an individual. And in our battle, again, remember, God doesn't want us to be retreating. He wants us to be advancing forward. So let me go ahead and pray with you, students in church. I pray, Lord, that, that uh, each of these individuals would see the importance of, of the armor that you've given us and that the battle is real, that this is not a fictitious, fictitious battle, but just because it's something that we cannot necessarily see um, everything that's going on, but we need to realize that it is real. So, dear Heavenly Father, I just want to lift up this body of believers, Lord, and even those that are struggling right now um, and seeking. I pray, Father God, that you would allow them to truly see uh, this battle for what it is. For some of those out there, it's their battle for their, their soul. They're um, bound and lost for hell. Because why? Because they are sinners and uh, Lord, they have not received that gift of Jesus Christ. So I, I pray, Lord, that they can realize that you want to arm them, that you want to protect them, that you want them to live a victorious life. And so I pray, Father God, that they would realize that they are um, in need of a, res of a rescuer. They are in need of a Savior. So, Father, please uh, allow these individuals to see uh, their life for what it is. Uh, Father God, they are lost without you. So help them to realize that they can have victory, victory in Jesus Christ. And uh, Lord, I pray for those out there that are in the battle. Lord, each and every one of us are in a battle. And for some, uh, they have become extremely stagnant or just in a state of, of relaxation, basically, in this battle. They're not advancing forward. They're, they're sitting still they're, or retreating. They're giving up. They're throwing in the towel. I pray, Father God, that they would see the true victory that they have in you, receiving you as their Savior, that they can advance forward, that you place all these things upon us so that we could live a victorious life. I pray, Lord, that they would evaluate themselves, that they would see, Lord, and make sure that they are <coughs> not taking off anything, but fully arming themselves for the battle that's ahead. So, Father, I look forward to, to just hearing the testimonies from my students, from hearing testimonies of our church members of how Lord, they uh, have continued to strive forward in their daily walk. And so, Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory now for you are worthy. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Church, I love you. I pray that you have a great night. I look forward to seeing you this Sunday. God bless you. Thank you for listening to the Foundation Bible Study. Remember to tap like and share to help spread God's word. If you have any questions, please contact us through social media or through our website at fbckc.com. Keep building that foundation.